Hi, Judgers! Welcome to another segment of One Arliwag Memorial High School Senior High School Math TV. Last time, we were able to determine the different types of conic sections and also the different degenerate cases of a circle, parabola, an ellipse, and hyperbola. We all know that when we have degenerate cases of the circle, we have a single point and an empty set. And it is the same with an ellipse. And for hyperbola, we have degenerate cases such as an intersecting line. For today, we will now apply what we have learned from the different conic sections. So we are given different examples and these examples are the applications on how we could solve different conic sections that is given in a word problem. So example number one. For example number one, a circle has center at the focus of the parabola y squared plus 16x plus 14y is equal to 44. And it is tangent to the directrix of this parabola. We're asked to find its standard equation. Again, a circle has center at the focus of the parabola y squared plus 16x plus 4y is equal to 44. And it is tangent to the directrix of this parabola. We are asked to find its standard equation. So the first thing that we need to manipulate is the equation of the parabola. So for the equation of the parabola, we need to find its vertex first. And after finding its vertex, all we have to do is to locate its focus and its directrix. Because the focus will now be the new center of the circle and the directrix will be the radius of our circle. So let us write y squared plus 16x plus 4y is equal to 44. So this is now the time that we need to convert this equation into the standard form of the parabola. And since we have y squared plus 4y, transfer 16 to the other side, that becomes negative 16 plus 44. Okay, we now have y squared plus 4y. So this is the term that we need to complete. That should be plus 4 is now equal to negative 16 plus 44 plus 4. y squared plus 4y plus 4. Let us now try to factor. Therefore, the factor of y squared plus 4y plus 4 is y plus 2 quantity squared is now equal to negative 16x. 44 plus 4 should be plus 48 y plus 2 quantity squared is equal to we need to factor out the coefficient of the value of x. So that is negative 16. If that is negative 16, therefore, its factors would be x minus 48 divided by 16 is 3. Therefore, we have the equation y plus 2 quantity squared is equal to negative 16 times the quantity x minus 3. Therefore, the vertex now is located at positive 3, negative 2. So that is our vertex. So we know that this parabola, since the right side is negative, and we have y squared, therefore we could say that this is opening to the left. Okay, it is opening to the left because of y squared and the right side is negative okay and since we have the vertices or the vertex so we have the vertex of the parabola the vertex is located at 3 negative 2 therefore we could now locate the value of c therefore 4c is equal to negative 16 and c is equal to negative 4 okay so that is the value of c so let us now try to graph this equation of the parabola. So in graphing, let us try to graph the vertex so that after we, we locate the vertex, we will be able to locate the focus and the directrix. Since the vertex is located at 3, negative 2, we could say that to the left of the vertex is the focus and to the right of the vertex is the directrix. And we will be going to the left 4 units and also 4 units going to the right. 4 units going to the left of the vertex, that is the focus. And 4 units going to the right of the vertex, that is the directrix. So this is the vertex. Its location is 
positive 3, negative 2. Okay? So, since we have the value of C, which is 4, we will now go 4 units to the left. So, this is our focus. And what is the location of the focus? If the vertex is 3, negative 2, therefore, the focus should be located at negative 1, negative 2. Because we will just count 4 units going to the left of the vertex. So that is negative 1, negative 2. And we're, we also have a condition that it is tangent to the directrix of the parabola. So if it is tangent, all we have to do is to count 4 units to the right. So in counting 4 units, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we just count. Therefore, this is the directrix. And its equation is x is equal to 7. Okay? Therefore, from the focus going to the vertex, that is 4. And from the vertex going to the directrix, that is... From the focus going to the directrix, that is 8. Okay? Therefore, the center of the circle is now located at the focus of the parabola, which is negative 1, negative 2. And for the radius... We could say that it is the distance from the focus going to the directrix. And that distance, if we would just count, it, it is equal to 8 units. So from the focus going to the directrix, that is 4 plus 4. Therefore, we have 8 units. And that is the radius. Since the radius is 8 units, we could say that r squared is equal to 8 times 8, which is 64. And this will now be the graph of the circle. Having the center as the focus of the parabola and is tangent to the directrix of the parabola. Therefore, we have an equation of the circle x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared is equal to r squared. Substituting this the value of the center and the radius will be having x minus minus 1 quantity squared plus y minus minus 2 quantity squared is equal to 64. Therefore, this becomes x plus 1 quantity squared plus y plus 2 quantity squared is equal to 64. And this is now the equation of the circle that is that contains center at the focus of the parabola and the radius is just equal to the distance from the focus going to the directrix of the parabola so this is how you solve this problem involving the applications of conic section so we just go back to our previous discussion about the equation of the circle and the equation of the parabola. Okay? So, again, the center is located at negative 1, negative 2, and r squared is equal to 64. So, let's have another question, another problem. So, for the second problem, we're asked to write the equation of the line that is tangent to the circle x minus 1 quantity squared plus y plus 2 quantity squared is equal to 25 at the point 5, negative 5. So before we discuss this one, so this is a circle, an illustration of the circle with the center located at C and there is a point. So if we connect the center of the circle and the point, we'll be having a line and that line has um, a slope and that slope is and that line is perpendicular to the tangent line again it is perpendicular to the tangent line and in order for us to get the slope of the line that is perpendicular to the line uh, from the center going to the point therefore its slope is just the negative reciprocal of the slope of the point from the center going to the point okay so that is how we get the slope of a tangent line. We will get first the slope of the line from the center going to the point to that point and then gets get its negative reciprocal. 
and that negative reciprocal will now serve as the slope of the line that is tangent to the circle. Okay? So the center of the circle is located at 1, negative 2, and the radius is equal to 5 units. So in order for us to solve this, so let us first try to plot the points. The center is at 1, negative 2. So if the center is located at 1, negative 2, so let us now plot the point, and the point is located at 5, negative 5. Okay, so that is now the line connecting the center and the point. And the slope of the line, CP, okay, so that is delta Y over delta X. The center is located at 1, negative 2, while point P is located at 5, negative 5. So the formula now for the slope is delta Y over delta X. Therefore, it is equal to Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So if we will be getting this slope, remember that this is not yet the slope that we will be using. So substituting the values, we have negative 5 minus negative 2 over 5 minus 1. Negative 5 minus minus 2, that becomes plus, therefore that is negative 3, 5 minus 1 is 4. The slope now of the line segment CP is negative 3 over 4, but this is not the slope that we will be using. The slope that we will be using is the negative reciprocal of the slope. So that is the slope of the tangent line. The negative reciprocal of the slope, which is 4 over 3. Since we have negative 3 over 4, its negative reciprocal is positive 4 over 3. Since the tangent line is just perpendicular to the line, C, P, line segment C, P. It is perpendicular. And once you have perpendicular lines, remember that their slopes are the negative reciprocal of their slopes. Again, the slopes that you will be getting are just the negative reciprocals of each other. Therefore, we could not yet use negative 3 over 4 since that is just the slope of the line segment C, P. The slope of the tangent line is different and the slope of the tangent line is the negative reciprocal of the line segment C. Okay? And that is 4 over 3 for this instant. Okay, so since we are um, getting the equation of the line, we will be using the point slope form. That is y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. Substituting the values of point P, for y1 and for x1 and y1, therefore we have 5y minus negative 5 is equal to m, which is 4 over 3 times x minus x1, which is 5. y minus minus 5, that becomes y plus 5, is now equal to 4 over 3x minus 20 over 3. So since we need to distribute 4 over 3, therefore y is equal to 4 over 3x minus 20 over 3, and then we have minus 5. Therefore y is equal to 4 over 3x. The LCD should be 3. It should be negative 20, not negative 5, not yet negative 5, because we need to multiply negative 5 by 3. So... That becomes negative 15. Again, 3 should be multiplied to negative 5 and that becomes negative 15. Therefore, y is equal to 4 over 3x minus 35 over 3. Therefore, this is now the equation of the line that is tangent to the circle x minus 1 quantity squared plus y plus 2 quantity squared is equal to 25. And it is... Um, tangent to the point 5, negative 5. So do not forget that the slope of the tangent line is different from the slope of the line connecting the center and a point. So we just get the negative reciprocal of the slope 
of the line CP to make it the slope of our tangent line. Okay, so I hope that this is clear. And this is now the equation of the line. So we use the point slope form to get the equation of the line. So if you have questions, if you have comments, if you have suggestions, please let me know by messaging me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter. Once again, I am Engineer Jod Edward Hernandez saying that mathematics is always fun. Goodbye and God bless.